Hi, my name is Kimball Carew. I'm the leader of the Communist Party of British Columbia, presenting a statement by our party on the discovery of 215 children's bodies at the Kamloops Residential School. The discovery of 215 children's bodies buried on the grounds of the Indian Residential School in Kamloops has sparked a wave of deep sorrow and anger across Canada, a country which has a centuries old history of committing genocide against Indigenous peoples. As the Truth and Reconciliation Commission reported six years ago, at least 6,000 children were known to have died in these schools and many others were not yet counted. The death rate among the 150,000 or more children forced into these institutions was over 1 in 25, higher than among Canadian troops who fought in Europe during the Second World War. The Communist Party of BC joins with many other movements and organizations calling for meaningful action to end the racist legacy of colonialism and capitalism in this province and across the country. Official apologies, inquiries that result in recommendations left largely ignored by governments, legislation that evades the fundamental issue of the theft of Indigenous lands. These measures were never sufficient. And the latest expressions of sorrow from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and BC Premier John Horgan ring completely hollow. The news from Kamloops proves again that the residential schools were instruments of assimilation and genocide by a Canadian imperialist state, which was literally built on the foundations of colonial empires. The drive to seize the lands and resources of the northern half of Turtle Island began over 500 years ago and has never yet relented to this day. This is a story of violent displacement of original inhabitants across vast territories, of treaties signed but soon violated and ignored by the colonial powers and then by the Canadian capitalist state. In the name of creating a so-called white man's country, lands which were never surrendered, including most of modern day British Columbia, were simply occupied while indigenous nations were forced onto small reserves. Cultural genocide took many forms on the West Coast, such as the potlatch law, denial of fishing and hunting rights, and religious conversions. The, the residential schools were a deliberate instrument to weaken collective resistance to the massive resort theft by the Canadian capitalist class and the US-based energy monopolies. Forbidden to speak their own languages, these children suffered hunger, cold, disease, physical beatings, psychological and sexual abuse. Those who fled were brutally punished and the families of those who died were often not even informed. Since the TRC report and the adoption of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Canadian politicians have uttered many high sounding words about reconciliation, but the federal Liberal government still refuses to end its racist discrimination against Indigenous children in care. Similar issues of unfair treatment of Indigenous children and youth continue in British Columbia. Both the Liberals and the Horgan NDP give massive taxpayer support for fossil fuel pipelines and hydro dams in violation of Indigenous treaty rights and the UNDRIP requirement of informed consent for such projects. The Horgan government's refusal to protect old growth forests at the Ferry Creek watershed on Vancouver Island is yet another example of its true priorities. It's always been the case in Canada that corporate profits and wealth are the guiding principle of governments, not the interests of Indigenous children. The Communist Party of BC calls on the Horgan government to take immediate concrete action, cancel the Site C dam and LNG projects, take serious measures to improve living conditions in Indigenous communities, and restore so-called crown lands to the rightful owners, the Indigenous peoples. On a Canada-wide scale, the TRC demand for a full and complete accounting of all deaths in residential schools must be an immediate priority for all governments.